In this video, I'll show you 13 refactorings for PowerShell in Visual Studio Code using PowerShell Pro Tools. This refactoring converts PS item to dollar underscore. Uh, PS items used for loops such as for each object. So if you actually go to your PS item here and hit control dot, it's going to bring up the refactoring menu and I can select uh, convert to dollar underscore and doing that will actually um, change it from PS item to dollar underscore. This refactoring is used for changing dollar underscore to PS item. So PS item or dollar underscore can be used uh, as the iterator variable for um, things like for each object and where object. And if we actually select our dollar underscore and hit control dot, we can say convert to PS item and it's actually going to convert that um, dollar underscore to PS item. This refactoring is used for converting a single line command into a multi-line command. You can do so with backticks. So if you actually select anywhere in this path for this particular command line, you might have a really long one. Uh, you can click the little light bulb and say convert to multi-line command. And it's actually going to um, put the backticks in and put the arguments on their own individual lines. Similar to the convert to multi-line um, refactoring, the convert to splat refactoring actually can be used to do the same thing, but um, use splatting rather than using backticks. So if we select anywhere in this line, we can hit the light bulb and say use parameter splatting. You'll see that it creates a hash table with the different parameters, and then it splats those parameters onto the command that we selected. This refactoring is used for when you're working with modules that don't have a PSD1 file, you can actually call the export module member commandlet. So if we actually select this and hit control dot, you'll see that we have the export module member um, refactoring here. That's going to put an export module member um, call at the bottom. And it also works with variables. So if I were to select this and I were to say export module member, you'll see that it exports it as a variable in that case. The first one it actually exported it as a function and the second one it exported it as a variable. This refactoring is used for generating a function from a snippet of code. So for example, I have this start process get process call here and if I select those two lines, if I hit control alt r and then select extract function, I can say something like new process and you'll see that it actually generates a function based on um, my two lines of code and it actually created a param block that accepts the name um, variable that I'm using inside that, um, in that block of code. This refactoring is used for taking a snippet of code or block of code and actually extracting it to another file. So if I were to select these three lines in my refactoring.ps1 file and then hit control alt r and then say extract selection to file. It's going to let me um, pretty much enter a file name. So I'll say my file.ps1. What's left in this file is an actual execution to um, the file that I just generated where I extracted my um, code to. And if I go to the next file, you'll see that it took the code from my refactoring.ps1 and moved it into my file. This refactoring is used to actually generate a function from the usage of a function. So right now, new function doesn't exist in my scope here, but if I wanted to actually create a new function function, what I would usually have to do is write new function, or function, and new function, and then the contents, the param block, and everything. But what I can do with this refactoring is actually just click anywhere in this line, and then select the um, generate function from usage refactoring. And what that's going to do is actually create a new function based on the usage. So it's created my param block, it added the three um, parameters to it, and it still includes the actual um, function call after I have defined my function. So now I can go ahead and kind of fill in the contents of that function. This refactoring is used for generating proxy functions. Proxy functions allow you to extend existing commandlets to include additional um, parameters or functionality. So if you actually select a, um, you know, a commandlet that you want to generate a proxy function for, you can click the little light bulb and say generate proxy function. And what that's actually going to do is create the whole proxy function. And as you can see here, it has um, the commandlet binding, all the existing parameters that are on start process. And now you could add additional parameters and then kind of change the behavior of start process to define your own version of start process using this proxy function. This refactoring is used to create using namespace um, 
expressions based on um, your type references. So you can see here I'm kind of using a long type name, system management, automation, run spaces, run space. Uh, with this refactoring, what I can do is actually select this type and say introduce using namespace. And what that's going to do is call using namespace. And now I can shorten my, um, my type reference here to just run space. This refactoring is used to move arguments on a command like this. So you can actually select one of the arguments and if you hit control page down, it's going to move the argument to your left. And um, you can see it actually brings the parameter along with the value to that parameter to the left. And if you do control page up, it's going to move it back. So you can kind of reorder your parameters just by using control page up and page down. This refactoring is used for splitting a long pipeline into uh, multiple lines. So if you have a long pipeline like this, you can actually use the split pipeline um, refactoring. So what that's going to do is it actually takes um, each section of the pipeline and splits it out and stores it in a variable. So you can see I have start process, it stores in result. Result is then piped to get process, which is then stored to result. And then finally, result is piped to debug process. And then finally, we remove the result. So it still behaves the same way, but you kind of have the ability to set breakpoints um, during your pipeline processing. This refactoring is used to extract a string into a variable. So I can actually select a portion of this string and then I can select the extract variable refactoring. It's going to generate a new variable with that string that I selected and then introduce that into the uh, second string. And then I have the opportunity to uh, rename that variable to something else. So um, it allows me to kind of extract um, portions of a string into um, other variables. In this video, we looked at how you can use 13 refactorings for PowerShell in Visual Studio Code.